મારજીન but as a person personally do you feel that the, uh, the change is being increasing day by day benefits yes sir definitely improvement uh, definitely sir uh, the results are also improving in terms of uh, tell us about ib uh, itbp okay sir uh, sir it's basically indo tibetan border police force mm. uh, which is meant to guard the indo china border Mm. Uh, which runs along the five indian states of jammu and kashmir uttarakhand uh, then sikkim arunachal pradesh and himachal pradesh tell us something about maneser 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 is a sir, automobile hub uh, in the state of haryana right and, uh, anything else sir then uh, that of automobiles Sir, as of now, I can only. Uh, What do you know about NSG? Sir, NSG is a anti-terror organization known as National Security Guard, uh, which is uh, exclusively trained to undertake uh, anti-terror operations in the throughout the territory of India. Where do the people train? A uh, minor, sir. Like they have their. What are your preferences? Sir, deputy collector is my first preference. Yeah. Or deputy DDO, and the second is uh, deputy superintendent of police, and the third is. district register okay now differentiate the working of deputy ddo and deputy collector three differentiations okay uh, sir so uh, basically deputy collector uh, has uh, various kinds of postings uh, he may be posted in a mid day meal program and as a head of the mid day meal program or as a prant adhikari or as a uh, or as a dis- uh, deputy collector land records so based on uh, all the roles he has different functions to perform whereas as a deputy ddo uh, he is associated with the zilla parishad so he has more to do with the developmental works which are undertaken by the zilla parishad and the taluka panchayat under them uh, this is the first difference and uh, a deputy ddo when gets prom- uh, when he is promoted uh, he becomes a district development officer whereas a deputy collector when promoted becomes a, an additional collector or a resident additional collector uh, this is the second difference sir and uh, third is uh, deputy ddo has more to do with developmental works whereas our, our district our deputy collector has more to do with uh, the revenue revenue collection land revenue collection of the government and also maintenance of law and order and day to day administration of the district sub sub division uh, of pg is of which he is uh, control of who is empower whose financial powers are much sir between deputy ddo mm. I'm sorry, sir. In terms of financial power, I there are two type of powers delegated to the officer. Okay. Which 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 one? Well, how do you differentiate the administrative powers and financial powers? 
sir administration powers are uh, those which are to do with the implementation of government schemes and to make them to basically to ensure the last mile delivery of government schemes it has to do with the administration whereas the the finance that goes into th the delivery of those schemes uh, is uh, related to the financial uh, jurisdiction of the particular post holder right your third preference is dysp second is dysp sir second is dysp yes, yeah right uh, what do you know about the sub divisional police officer sub sub divisional police officer uh, basically uh, heads a sub division under a district a mm. district is headed by a superintendent of police mm. uh, which may have two or three sub divisions and each of them is headed by a dysp who has a number of police uh, some may, uh, around 3 to 5 police stations uh, to look after and to supervise in his uh, subdivision and his what 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 is your opinion on contractual appointments Con contractual appointments sir they have a set of pros and cons both mm -hmm. uh, if i talk about pros then uh, it provides the it provides the leverage to the government to enhance its efficiency uh, as in uh, it can hire talent of various kinds as and when needed as the need arises and a particular kind of talent can be hired and uh, also it uh, basically it 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 kind of it kind of uh, enables more uh, talent pool to tap in for the government okay contractual and if i talk about cons then sir in that uh, uh, there is one thing a lack of uh, accountability and responsibility which uh, we often see in terms of contractual appointments and uh, secondly sir uh, uh, as far as i suppose uh, they do not have a reservation system uh, in contractual appointments so that gets bypassed the concept of social justice is it a, a humiliating exercise for the appointed how far it is humiliating sir in terms of appointment sir humiliating as in if uh, if the if the concept of reservation or social justice is bypassed then uh, that becomes a kind of no no i am i'm asking about not not the reservation system okay. but the contractual appointment sir is a humiliation sir actually humiliation as in a contract uh, is is something which is made before uh, the process of execution begins so it's very well known to the appointee that for x number of years or x number of what months, are your views on the the uh, i was to ask you something but i forget right now uh, if i recollect i will ask you again yes. uh, bilateral entries okay uh, sir basically lateral entries are nowadays being uh, undertaken at the, at the level sorry of lateral entries not bilateral sorry. yeah uh, joint secretary and uh, director level posts in the central government and uh, they also carry a set of pros and cons with uh, them uh, in the first place they let the fresh talent come in uh, who are specialist in their particular field uh, as compared to the base uh, nor recruit career ias officers who are generalist and uh, secondly sir it uh, it attracts more talent into the system and and if i talk about the cons sir then it's it's kind of a setback for the people who are career recruits and have been working uh, at the grassroots level and uh, the second point is sir uh, the ones who directly come in at joint secretary or directly director level do not have the basic knowledge or concept of the government uh, functionary functioning and machinery and how uh, what are the problems which are uh, faced by the ground level officer so, so there so there will be in fight so there we can be. imagine sir. can we imagine the in fight in between sir definitely there there might be conflicts taking place between the career recruits and the direct uh, the lateral entry uh, it's about sir uh, a kind of uh, they need to be brought on the same table and the uh, the perks and also the responsibilities need to be shared equally between them so only i mean they also need to go on ground and have the feeling of uh, people who are working on ground okay in the beginning of our interview you just uh, we just discussed about the indo china uh, what are the issues going on between the indo and china border sir indo china uh, border these days is facing a number of issues uh, one is uh, in the jammu and the ladakh area 
uh, on the Bagongso Lake area and Galwan uh, Valley. Really, one what is famous for the Bagongso uh, Lake? Pillar Eight. Do you have an idea? Sir, I heard Pillar Eight. Pillar Eight. Yeah, sir. Or we can say Pillar Eight. Okay. Or Mountain Eight. Right, there are so many abbreviations words are used in over there. Sir, those are basically contentious areas uh, which lie on the line of actual control, the Macmillan line, and uh, China also claims uh, a part of uh, those that mountain range, and India also claims, which until now was uh, a no man's land. Each of the uh, armies used to stay away from that particular area, but China has uh, uh, supposedly encroached on that area, and as a result of which, it is facing resistance from the Indian armed forces. Okay. In the Pillar. What are the other issues? Between India and China, sir. Uh, also, uh, recently, satellite images had come up which showed that China has built an entire village in the Arunachal Pradesh, uh, in the in the Indian area of Arunachal Pradesh. Which area? Do you have an idea about it? Uh, sir, I do not know the exact name, but it has. It is. Uh, I think it's Tawang. Right, sir. Tawang. Okay. But sir, India has uh, clearly stated that. Uh, that the jurisdiction of the village or the territory lies in the Chinese region and not in the Indian perception of the boundary. So that is also a point of contention which is coming up along that border. And also, sir, India China. What is the difference between line of control and Macmillan Rekha? Sir, line of uh, control has to do with India Pakistan border, and line of actual control or the Macmillan line has to do with the India China border. Okay. And uh, a line of control is also known as Ratcliffe boundary. Okay. Uh, so Are you sure? Yes. Sir. Okay. Doklam is also a one big issue. Right, sir. It's known as the trijunction issue. Right, sir. What is it? Sir, Doklam is basically a plateau which is situated in Bhutan and is uh, con is in, and is connected with the Chumbi Valley region, which mm -hmm. lies between Sikkim, Bhutan, and China. And China had reportedly in 2017 made incursions into the uh, Doklam plateau, which put the the chicken snake of india which connects the which lies basically in the darjeeling region and which connects the mainland with the northeast india it was because of china's incursion in doklam that chicken snake what are the india. steps india is taking to countercheck the china in southeast asia in the recent time okay uh, sir so as far as i can uh, recall India has uh, come up with a coalition called Quad with USA, Australia, Japan, and India as one of the members. No, particularly rega regarding to the Southeast Asia, means uh, Southeast India. Sorry. I'm sorry. Or East Asia, East India. Sorry. I mean, uh, how it is countering with China yes. in East India? One policy is uh, very famous: Look East Connectivity Project. Do you know? It is not a look east policy. It's look east connectivity project. I'm sorry. Kaladan Pariyojana. Yes, sir. I am aware of Kaladan. It is a part of it. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I am aware of Kaladan and even yes, IMD. it is a small part of it. Okay. Okay. What is the difference between a look east policy and act east policy of India? Sir, look east policy. Uh, was uh, more of notional concept, whereas Act East is uh, more of delivering. I mean, uh, for example, as you just mentioned, that Kaladan multimodal project and uh, Indo-Myanmar, Myanmar Thailand trilateral highway. These are all a part of Act East. We are actually delivering on ground uh, in terms of connectivity, uh, economic connectivity, or uh, be it people-to-people uh, -people contact, enhancing trade. So that all comes under Act East. <coughs> in a Gujarat. a uh, one event is famous vibrant gujarat submit sir and in a, in a near time it is going to happen in gujarat sir. it's 10th number of vibrant gujarat submit mm -hmm. and it's really a successful events mm -hmm. particular in a gujarat mm -hmm. other states of india are also trying to do a same activity like haryana punjab rajasthan bihar mm -hmm. but they are not successful in this event If you are appointed in the Haryana, which type of steps you just want to take to get a success this event? Sir, so basically, 
the vibrant gujarat summit is uh, based uh, on the concept of bringing in fdi in the state of gujarat be it in the manufacturing sector or services so what we need uh, uh, in, on the very ground level is to have a very conducive industrial policy uh, which for example gujarat recently launched its new industrial industrial policy in the year 2020 which has a lot of incentives uh, for the fdi so these kinds of policies have to be have to come in place in the states which you mentioned about haryana haryana yes haryana sir so uh, which which actually uh, attract the investors abroad to come in and uh, sign mous and get projects gujarat around. is a different type of geological and ad- administrative and the industrial structure yes haryana has a different geographical uh, advantages right sir i mean uh, it should be uh, in uh, consonance with the haryan uh, geography and the advantages it it holds uh, but basically to uh, to attract investors the way, there should be an incentive for them in terms of liberalization of your uh, regulatory regime uh, lib- uh, li- uh, liberalization of the land and labor laws easy land acquisition one word uh, we just uh, used to talk uh, means uh, user discussed on is nsg yes sir what is it the national security guard and one also a meaning of it and sir as of now i think nuclear, nuclear supply group right nuclear supply group right sir why india is not getting a membership in nsc sir because uh, india has not signed the npt non proliferation treaty of uh, 1968 as a result of which uh, india is uh, india cannot become a member of nsg however despite not being a mem- not being a member of nsg india has been granted a waiver from the nsg in terms of new is direction. it a qualification to take a membership in ns yes sir as of now nsg requires signing of npt okay <coughs> sir where do you get the term mainland india and northeast india sir it is uh, i mean i have heard in various uh, government policy documents mainland india mainland india and uh, northeast india okay now that we are in 1921 sorry t- uh, 2021 uh, let's go back to 1947 and you are tasked with uh, redrawing uh, india's boundary you know uh, when i say india's boundary india you know maybe fixing boundary challenges with india uh, bangladesh india pakistan uh, even uh, india and china what would be your uh, boundaries what areas you would prefer to have with india what areas you would uh, let it go okay sir sir if you go back to 1947 yes then uh, the indian <coughs> subcontinent consisted of pakistan present day pakistan present day bangladesh and india china was at that time already had a boundary with india yeah so if we talk now uh, c- coming to the land demarcation hmm. sir radcliffe uh, boundary commission uh, had made a very strategic mistake of declaring the boundary demarcation right after independence despite the fact that the report was ready 2 days before the independence of 15th august 1947 so they did not declare uh, make that declaration in order to uh, avoid taking responsibility so that was a big blunder i suppose because as soon as the uh, administrative power and the sta- uh, the independence was transferred to the indian government uh, they and the boundary lines were declared uh, that led to a large scale violence which could have been prevented had that thing happened long before the transfer of power given that administrative machinery military machinery and uh, all the agricultural lands could have been uh, kind of Uh, divided based on consensus of all the stakeholders especially the citizens that did not happen and it was imposed on them as a result of which large scale violence happened so i believe that had that been done long before the partition uh, i mean long before the transfer of power we could have prevented this why disaster. we call it transfer of power not freedom sir because uh, as per the indian independence act of 1947 the which was passed by the british parliament so the sovereignty of india lied when the india uh, passed its own constitution which happened in 1950 as a result of which we became a republic in 1950 and 
it by default uh, we became a sovereign till then we were a dominion of the british it is uh, believe like till 1950s a uh, few of the armed forces were still reporting to the queen is it right i'm sorry sir i'm not aware of this question. okay uh by your answers i feel like you should go for upfc or maybe uh, combined defense services did you took any attempt yes sir i have attempted upsc and as well as the cds i have appeared for two ssb interviews okay how was your experience sir excellent okay uh, it was conference out yes sir conference both times both times sir. what happened what you feel what happened sir maybe it's the first time i uh, did not get a gist of the uh, the individual tasks which were given uh, and the second time i thought maybe the psych so the psych test was a bit uh, kind of tricky which might have led to my not getting selected however they since they do not declare what are the weak areas or what are the marking system i cannot uh, say for sure what went wrong so uh, defense forces were uh, the first lab for you sir so why not uh, you know again giving preference uh, to capf or maybe a dysp So CAPF because there was age bar mm-hmm. only I could attempt only at till twenty five years of age. Okay. And I did attempt that after that I was debarred from that I could not attempt. And DYSP the reason being sir being my second preference is uh, while preparation for civil service examination I came to know that administrative services have a lot more kind of diversity uh, in terms of uh, connecting with people and in terms of service delivery. I mean undertaking the developmental works they have a lot of potential. Okay. DYSPs also do have, but visa V. If we have a comparison, then DC has a larger uh, potential to. You are a yoga practitioner, sir. What all asanas you prefer doing, sir? Basically, I begin with uh, the Surya Namaskar. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then I head on towards uh, Halasan, mm-hmm. Chakrasan, mm-hmm. and there also Trikonasan in between for a bit of stretching. And uh, and I mostly rely on the pranayam that is uh, Nadi Shodhan pranayam. What are the uh, best asanas for uh, strengthening your core? Okay, sir. So one uh, we have is Chaturang Dandasan, mm-hmm. which is equivalent to plank mm-hmm. that strengthens the core, and the other is Chakrasan. Okay. That too has a lot of uh, tightening of the gluteus muscles, our lower back muscles, as well as the abs, abdominis. Sure. These two, I believe, are very very important. Uh, what are challenges for India in next ten fifteen years? from industries or economic uh, point of view and you can add uh, security uh, perspective also okay so so in terms of uh, economic challenges if we talk then china uh, is a is a rising threat to uh, india in the asian sub, in the ancient sub, asian subcontinent and for that uh, we need to enhance our bilateral free trade agreements with a number of countries so that we can enhance our exports which are primarily now led uh, by china in the entire southeast asia region as well as the asian sub asian continent so that is one thing uh, we need to counter it with the fts and the second thing in terms of security if we talk then uh, we need to have more and more of quad and uh, new quad 2.0 like uh, coalitions with different nations of different uh, ideologies so as to counter the strategic uh, rise of china in the indo pacific and the in- entire indian ocean region what should be solution to the internal conflict within india like let's say uh, naxals sir for naxals uh, right now uh, we already have a program called samadhan by the cabs which is in place and uh, also various state police forces have their own commando forces to tackle the situation of naxalism for example we have greyhounds in andhra pradesh and uh, maharashtra also has a specialized force c I am not able to recollect the number after it. It's called C Command oh. or something. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Last question. Sir. Give me the definition of yoga according to Patanjali. Sir, according to Maharshi Patanjali, uh, yoga is derived from the Sanskrit word yuj, which means union. So it is union of the of human soul to the ultimate soul of our. G- give it. Give it me in Sanskrit. what patanjali muni ji has said 
I'm sorry sir Sanskrit definition is not even ready to Okay sure go over thank you Saru sir please sure, sure. good what's your name sir Mukul Mukul Mehra ji Mukul ji स्पीड बहुत बोलवा એના કારણે જે વર્ડ છે ને એકબીજાના અંદર ભળી ભળી જાય છે ઓકે એટલે જે અહીંયા પહોંચે એટલે શું છે મિક્સ અપ થઈ જાય છે તો પેનલ ઇઝ લાઈક યુ નો દે આર ઇનટુ લેટ 50 સાઈટ ટ્રેકની આસપાસ તો તો સ્કોર થશે બરાબર પછી થોડો વોઇસ તમે હજુ અપ કરી શકો છો ઓકે આઈ કોન્ટેક્ટ મિસિંગ છે બરાબર જ્યાં જરૂર પડે ત્યાં તમે સ્માઇલ પણ આપી શકો છો बाकी नॉलेज में कोई वाधो नहीं बराबर नॉलेज संदर्भ में कोई कमेंट्स नहीं सारू से दोस्त ઓલ ધ બેસ્ટ ઓકે થેન્ક યુ સર સર સ્માઇલ જે મે આપી કીધું કે અમુક જગ્યાએ જ્યાં જરૂર હોય ક્યાં આપી શકી હોય મે એટલે સમ કો કોઈ ક્વેશ્ચન નો આન્સર નથી ખબર બરાબર તો એ સ્થિતિ ના અંદર એવો કોઈ ઇન્સિડન્ટ આવી જાય કે જ્યાં આવું લાગે કે हाँ सर आई एम अवेर अबाउट इट बट आई डोंट नो ए रीते खबर बट आई जस्ट रिकॉल तो जय अमुक वक्त जेन्यून स्माइल आप फेक बराबर ना आए तो कोई वाधो ही नहीं एवं कसू नहीं जबरदस्ती थी स्माइल को थोपी दी बस जो आ रीते जेन्यून आई ना बस ए रीते आई जाए तो मुद्दों अलग है बाकी एवं लावा प्रयत्न ना करता बाकी बहुत सारूँ है दोस्त मार रीड ड्राइंग द लाइन में थोड़ा स्पेसिफिक हो सकते थे जैसे इंडिया गेव तीन बीघा या बांग्लादेश में बहुत सारे यू नो पॉकेट्स थे इंडिया ने दिया कुछ बांग्लादेश से आए चिटागोंग है तो वो थोड़ा सा एक दो तीन स्पेसिफिक बता सकते थे कि जो हुआ है यू नो इन लास्ट सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट को ईस कम करने के लिए ओके तो वो you can always if you face these kind of questions it's very rare but okay. still okay all the best thanks sir thanks thank you